Hi, my name is uh, Sean Selby. I'm from Atoka, Oklahoma. It is a very small town. Uh, there's no getting around it. Uh, there's only a couple thousand people here. Well, uh, so I've always lived here my whole life. I'm 28 now. I've never lived in anywhere else, and I just kind of live out in the county here. And so is how I kind of started doing trees with my dad is he owned a company that just did like very light remodeling and construction, not really like new construction, just kind of working on old things for the most part. And he does really his main business is water well pumps and then filtration. And then he works with uh, like installing new sewer systems like septic, aerobic, and cellars, okay? And because he's got a backhoe. Well, back when I was about 17, he just went and found his very first tree job. Actually, I might not even been quite 17. I might have been later part of 16 because I was in high school. And we were changing out like a bathtub faucet at this person's house 15, 16 miles away from here where we are now. And this woman was wanting her tree cut down just right out in front of the yard. There wasn't anything under it except for like her mailbox and that was it. And so, of course, my dad being the hustler, you know, he was like, okay, you know, we could do that tree. Uh, you know, would 300 be okay with you? And she, okay, you know, she, obviously, no one, looking back, you know, $300 was a bargain for that tree like no other. And so we did it, and we just used ladders. Uh, my dad did have a steel farm balls at the time, just his own personal saw for, like, working in the yard and pasture. And so then we would kind of start progressing once we cut down that tree, it was only 35, 40 feet tall. And uh, so once that was done, he kind of liked it, you know, and I didn't mind it at all. I thought it was definitely pretty neat, you know, because I like being outside. I like being outside more than inside changing out faucets and pipes and because I had to be the guy underneath the house. And of course that was muddy, dark, and there's insects like spiders, like crazy under houses. You know, I was tired of it anyways. So he started pushing that and me and my brother would work with him too. My brother's four years younger than me, so at first he was quite young, but then as we got going a few more years, when he got out of school, he helped us uh, quite steadily. I mean, we were both full-time together at some point. And he actually got to where after like a year of doing these with ladders and just kind of doing little stuff, he said, you know, I want to go and rent a tow behind man lift, like an aerial lift. So, we did start doing that. It was only like 45 feet or something. It was a very small man lift, but it kind of got us in to doing that. And then the money started climbing after that. You know, with that man lift, we might could start doing jobs. It was a thousand, uh, fifteen hundred bucks, and I think that like, I don't think we ever broke past two thousand dollars for a job with that aerial lift. Okay, or I just can't really recall one. Okay. <laughs> so then after we had done a few jobs with that it only been it only felt like it was about two years maybe max that we cut down the first tree to where we were done with the renting of the towable and then he wanted to go and buy a bucket truck so we started looking online and he found an old utility style bucket truck it was like a 1992 international it was old even then because the actual lift that was on the back was older than the truck it was just like a, a remount later on and you know we started getting up into the bigger jobs like some of those jobs ended up being you know we might do trees for a couple thousand but he might get bigger jobs that were in excess of ten thousand dollars and i mean i can remember him getting jobs you know over fifteen thousand and we all liked it i was only at the age of 17 getting like six bucks an hour uh, my dad paid just incredibly low. So after I had started doing trees, you know, after a couple years of getting six bucks an hour, I did progress to like $10 an hour. And it was still terrible. I mean, I never got anywhere at that. And so I was actually wanting to go out and st like get a backhoe of my own because this was before he had one. He was doing the trees and all the water stuff. And at the time I was really wanting to start my own backhoe work. And this was because we started working with another contractor here, like another guy that does plumbing. And I started learning how to install a septic system, like that had lateral lines for sewage. I started learning to install those and I was learning to do it to code legally. 
Well, however it happened, my dad ended up just kind of using me to go and do that. He was at the job doing that, however, it was something that I wanted to progress to. Well, he did it because he wouldn't co-sign on a loan for me to get a truck, a trailer, and a backhoe, or none of that. And so even if I could have come up with the down and everything, there was nobody to sign for something like that so that I could take on a loan. Well, he did all of that and he is now fully taking that over. Well, of course, I didn't like it. You know, he already had the trees. And I mean, it's just every little thing that I might have wanted to try, he literally went out and did it. I mean, because we would talk about it and everything. And I, he would never offer me a partnership. One time he did, but it was literally like just, it was terrible. It, he offered me 5%. So, and he doesn't, he back then didn't even do six figures a year. So, I mean, he was literally offering me like $5,000 for a year's worth of work. It was just like, I was kind of offended by it, <laughs> to say the least. But uh, my wife ended up, she was coming, like, this was when I was about 20 years old. My wife was getting out of school. So, she was graduating to be an LPN. And this was like at a technical training school about 35 miles away from here in Calera. And when I was actually there that night, I seen these uh, big banners. Like they were just kind of saying what the school did. They had automotive and welding and the nursing program, computer work. Well, they had culinary arts. And I had always loved cooking. Uh, but I always thought that would be like some kind of a, oh, I like to watch it on TV. And then that would be like a fantasy. Okay. Like, you know, my dream job. You know, no one ever achieves their, achieves their dream job for the most part. So I thought, you know, my gosh, this is my chance. I just want to go ahead and do it. So I started out doing that and you know, I loved it. And when I actually got out of that class, it was only like a year long. So when I got out of there, I actually met Lynn, who was the groundskeeper maintenance man for the school. And he had his own catering service on the side. It's like a seasonal business and for extra money. And he was fully legal, like licensed, insured and everything for cooking professionally. And so I started to do that with him, really loved it. And then after about three years of being there with him, I ended up telling him, you know, hey, I want to move out to my place so I don't have to drive 35 miles a day because I used to work seven days a week routinely in the busy season. And I might work two weeks straight before I even have a half a day off. So I did end up achieving that. We are inside of my catering facility now, which I used to store some of my equipment for tree service. And it's just basically a place where I can cook for large quantities of people for anything from a wedding to you name it, we can cook for it from like a few people to hundreds or a thousand people. It doesn't really matter how many people. So I got really good at that. Well, so after everything was settled here, I ended up going back to work with my dad on trees because I've had this, I've been in cooking for, you know, like seven years and I, I always missed the trees. Okay. I still did those a little bit part time when I had time with my dad because I just enjoyed it. You know, it was, it was a lot of fun to me to go out and cut down a tree. So last year is when this really took off, okay? Because my kitchen was here, I didn't have to drive anywhere, so I had more time. And I could turn down some of the jobs that I didn't want because I don't do small jobs anymore. I don't do like 15 people no more. I only do like 25 and up. So that released a lot of time. Well, last year, we were cutting down some trees together. We had a backhoe at this point, a one ton, and uh, the bucket truck, the same bucket truck. Then we started actually like costing it out per hour and looking at just how much money there was in trees. And, uh, by not having to cut the trunks up and everything and just throw it in the backhoe and then it'll load the trees up. You know, you don't have access everywhere for backhoe, but you know, at least if they were by a driveway or close where there's no fences, it was no problem. Well. We found out that we were easily doing 300 an hour because there might be three of us there working because my dad had a full-time worker all the time or maybe even two sometimes. And that was some huge money because I do remember times where he would get over 400 an hour. And so I quickly realized, you know, there's real money in this. You know, I kind of wonder about doing this for myself. Well, as the months progressed after doing that, like part-time, you know, I still wasn't full-time because I had the kitchen but I, I did really enjoy it. So I started to tell my dad like, okay, if you want me to cut down these trees and act like the foreman and you know, I come in here and I'm gonna do all this stuff and then I'm gonna do equipment maintenance for free at the end of the day, 
this is what it's going to take to get me. Well, I got up to where I was getting about 60 bucks an hour. Now, at that rate, I did provide stuff, okay? And I kept on doing so. So, like, the middle of last year, kind of in the summer, I did actually get to where I purchased a dump trailer because I was planning on going out on my own, okay? This wasn't just because I was wanting to be an employee for my dad. And this was due to watching guys on YouTube talking about this. And like, but there was nobody talking about trees. They were talking about, you know, uh, Keith Kalfas was the only guy really doing trees. And then I watched the Geek to Freak and Johnny Mo. I watched all these guys that I possibly could. The Lawn Care Millionaire was around at that time. And I just thought that was just the coolest thing. And, you know, I wanted to be in the green industry, basically. And trees was my ticket because I already had a knowledge of it. For, and because I'd already done it for like 10 years, you know. So I was getting very efficient at it. And so it just so happened that once I got the dump trailer and then I hired a guy for myself. And then, like, I would pay for the drinks and food for everybody. And I would have to supply my own safety gear. Then I got up to about 125 an hour. Now, that sounds like a lot, and it was. However, I mean, I raced through the jobs. I made sure that if my dad was paying me that, and he did not want to, guys. He did not want me to be out on my own. He didn't want me to do any of that. He literally, when he like did the sewer job, he cut me out of that completely, even though that was like what I wanted to do. Well, then we're doing the trees, and of course, you know, I'm trying to do that too. He did not want me to be a partner or nothing. He did not want me to make hardly any money because he didn't want to pay me more than 15 an hour. When I quit working for him, eh, what he wanted to pay me last year, I was getting 15 bucks an hour. You cannot live off that. It's just not. You just can't. You know, Keith Calf has talked about this. You know, even if you're making a foreman wage, you just can never progress because that was just kind of on the side. It wasn't like very many hours a week, and I would go and bust through a job that might be $2,000 in one day, and I might get $150 of it, and it was just terrible. So once I did get to 125 an hour, uh, I didn't make very much money last year. I will say that I only pulled in about $9,000 last year at that because there was just not, it was, by the time I got to 125 an hour, I was already pretty much gone. It did not last but maybe three jobs that I got that kind of money. And sometimes it wasn't for very long. So then I started my own tree service. And I'm telling you, this was last year, and I love it. It is, it's just amazing. You know, for the guys out there that's starting out or whether you've already got a tree service or wherever point you are, you know, you know what I'm talking about. It can be actually just one of the best decisions you ever make to do. So I just, uh, wanted to tell you, you know yes it is hard to get here but it's well worth it and because now i'm actually fully insured and i'll kind of talk about all of this as i go and it has been just a great thing so by watching all these people on youtube you know they're the ones that gave me the motivation to go out and start so that's kind of why i'm making this video you know it's yes you know i am actually a product of just learning and progressing just like you would normally it's you know, not too many people just come out of the woodwork and they've never owned a tree service, they've never worked in a tree service, and then all of a sudden they want to start one. You know, you kind of got to start out somewhere to get the general knowledge, and then once you have that, you can learn the business side of things. And because, uh, like, by towards the end of last year, you know, I was watching all these guys. You know, the Lawn Care Millionaire is who I learned a lot from, and Keith Kalfas, because those were guys that I did really resonate with. I really liked them, and they can help you a lot. Okay, I want to have my channel provide you with a lot of just advice and, and tips and just kind of explain how I did it and maybe some of that can translate to you. Uh, so I just want to say thank you guys. Uh, you know, thanks to all the guys that I learned from, you know, there's a lot. I will talk about some, like what I learned from each of them in some instances. But uh, thanks guys. I hope this video has somewhat inspired you. And I will be making videos talking about most every aspect of my company so that you can kind of see uh, inside of it and maybe take some of those things for yourself. So thanks, guys. Uh, I will be making some more videos pretty soon, okay?